Breakfast Bible Bites, Sanctification, Part 4, The Continuing Work of God's Spirit in the Believer. During and after some years of Bible schooling, I pastored for five years without comprehending the nature-changing importance of sanctification through the renewing of our flesh-trained minds and its life-changing transition. The ongoing process of sanctification enables us to become one with Jesus' divine nature. Therefore, like so many other pulpiteers, I lack the ability to instruct on the real and essential importance, which explains why the churches I pastored had never really matured spiritually. Together, we continued to struggle to walk the Christian walk and become overcomers. The fault was not theirs, but mine. I, w I was like a baby in Christ, trying to teach other babies in Christ how to become more like Jesus in witness and thought. In those days, even when I read the Word of God, I had often confused God's clear and cognitive message with the imperfect, uninspired teaching of others, even though many held titles and claimed scriptural authority, but were nonetheless, like me, inadvertent Christian actors. We read about some of these demagogues in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, I will, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. The particular denomination I attended when I received Christ cloaked sanctification in pious words and wrapped it in ambiguity. The old King James used the word holiness, which is most often defined as a noun rather than a verb, as in a state of being holy or living in sanctification without descriptive words of application and how to achieve or move into that biblically required state. Holiness is most often taught as being set apart. When we are holy, we are set apart for God. Will that statement teach us how to walk in the new way of the Spirit? I don't think so. Many denominations ignore the mind-renewing and sanctifying work of the Spirit in the life of a believer, changing the way we think so that we can better personify the Christ that is in us. Most often, those theological groups can choose to ignore the active role of the Spirit in the life of a believer, perceptively teaching that having achieved the status of being saved, a person at that moment becomes an overcomer and God is just as pleased as punch with them, for they are now holy, set apart, persons, if they even if they continue to live in darkness of their unrenewed minds. I know there that there was more to it than that and so and so should you unless of course you're a product of immaculate conception born with god's spirit already in you for me the light didn't go on until 1997 when i first read the word in the american new american standard bible which translates holiness as an action verb that is sanctification as an act of ongoing purification Hebrews 12, 14 reads, Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification without which no man will see the Lord. Now, either I was snoozing in doctrine class for four years of mixed denominational Bible study courses, but they never taught it in a biblical sense of God's Spirit actively and continually working in the life of a true believer. I ended up with an interdenominational ordination of evangelism signed by a Pentecostal doctor of theology as well as a disciple of Christ and a Baptist minister. But I was still woefully ignorant of the principle so important as this frequently ignored doctrine of sanctification that so closely relates to our salvation and has the ability to make the necessary fundamental changes in a person's life and thought process, enabling us to be restored to the state of an acceptable child of the king as we join into the family of God. We will we'll begin to close the gap in the sanctification without which no man will see the Lord in tomorrow's Breakfast Bible Bites.